Hello everyone, my name is Matan Sudri from the Technion Israel Institute of Technology and today I will present my work on learning to estimate search progress using sequence of states together with my advisor Eris Karpas. First let's define what is search progress. Search progress estimation is a task of estimating the remaining search time. Progress estimation is defined as the number of nodes we expanded divided in the number of nodes we open in in the search until goal. Progress estimation is used in different temporal algorithms such as situated temporal planning and branch and bound. Currently in the literature, there is four main algorithms, VASP, VESP, BBP, and DBP. VASP, using the average number of expansions between nodes to estimate the search. VESP, calculate velocity that is defined as HZO minus H mean, divided in the number of nodes we expanded to estimate the search. BBP is assuming the heuristic is accurate and using G value divided in G plus H. DBP is assuming the search is acting like equation from second degree and using some of it. Those methods have a fixed equation and not using data to learn. In our work, we are going to learn to predict search progress based on search histories from similar problems. The prediction problem is given a search history sequence of states with their G value, edge values, uh, we need to give a prediction of our search progress. The key idea is to treat the search history as a sequence of states. To extract features, we look on the sliding window of at last 30 states. For each of those states, we look at their parent and grandparent and extract features. Because we are looking at a sequence, we use RNN as our classifier and specifically LSTM. Our pipeline is extract feature during search, run an LSTM network on those features and get a prediction where we are in the search. The input features are 30 nodes and for each one of them, we took node number indicate the ID of the node. Node F value from the heuristic, node H value from how much left according to the heuristic, Node G value, how much node we open until now, and node function factor, how much node we open from the current node. Those features were taken from, from each node, his parent and grandparent. In total, 50 features. The purpose of having those features is to extract how much nodes we open from a father to a son, same as they did in VASP. To those features, we add H0, that is the H value we started with. H mean is the smallest H we saw till now. This feature comes from VASP. N H mean, how much nodes we open since the last time we update H mean. This feature comes from VASP. F max is the max F we saw till now. In total, we have 90 features for each node and 30 nodes as a sequence. You can see an illustration in the right figure. Our network structure is an LSTM layer that is connected to fully connected layer, to a dropout layer, to a relu activation. And in the end, we have a fully connected with one output. Our main assumption is that search is a sequence of states that can be used in RNN. In our training procedure, we use three different regimes for different scenarios. All the other domains in a scenario where we have data for many domains and we don't have, and we want to predict in a new domain. The procedure is we trained on n minus one domains and test it on the last domain. As the same domain in a scenario where we have a data from a specific domain and we want to predict on the same domain. The procedure is we trained on the half of the data from the one domain and test it on the second half. ODTS in a scenario when we have a data from many domains and from a specific domain and we want to predict on this domain. The method is combined method of OD and SD. The procedure is we pre-train on N minus one domains after we train on half of the data from the last domain and in the end test it on the second half. In this work, we used 21 domains from IPC with 605 problems. On each problem, we ran the planner for 24 hours. And if the planner solved it in more than 1,000 nodes and less than 1 million nodes, we took this problem. 
The reason we filter problem is because small problems are not interesting because the planner can solve them fast. And the two big problems consuming too much memory on our hardware. The planners we used were ASTAR and GPFS using LMCAT and the HFF as a heuristic. In the right plot, we show the distribution of the data with different configurations. As you can see, GPFS with HFF solve more problems than others in the limits we defined. In, the, in this slide, we have a results from part one of our evaluation. Our OD versus all the other methods. In the left top table, we can see summary of the results. The first row is how much problems we solve using this configuration. GBFS with HFF solved most problems with 204 problems and GBFS with LMCAD, the minimum 89. Second row is how much domains OD get the best results. We can see that in all configurations, our method was the best in more than 50% of the domain and even GBFS with LMCAD, we had 86% of the domains. Third row is accuracy of OD compared to the second best method. The improvement is between 1.7 to 6.2 in absolute value. The right table show the result in, on all configurations and domains. Left side is ASTA, right side is GBFS, top side LMCAT and bottom side is AGFF. In the breadthness, we have standard deviation in each domain. In the bottom of the slide, we have plot on one problem with OD and all the other methods. OD is in purple, VSP in blue, VSP in orange, PVP is green, and DBP is red. As you can see, OD get the best result in all four configurations. In the next part of our experiment, we compared OD, SD, and ODTS on the domains we had minimal problem to learn from. In the table, we can see the result on each configuration and domain. In pertinences, we have the standard deviation. ODTS get the best results in all four configurations in 0.3 to 1.3 in absolute value. All the three methods get better results than the current methods. In our last part of our evaluation, we want to understand how good the network in generalization between different panels. We took all four configurations from ASTAR or GPFS with, with LMCAT and AGFF. And in total, we have four configurations for train and four configurations for test. We ran training using one configuration and test using other, total 16 instances. The results are in, are in the table. The rows are the test set and the columns are the train set. For example, first row with second column is training on ASTAR with LMCAT and test on GPFS with LMCAT. As we assume, the best results come where we use the same configuration in train and test. When we change the planner and the heuristic, we got the, the worst result by changing, and by changing only the heuristic, we get second best results. More interesting, we found that even if we train on one domain and test it on other configuration, is we still get better results from the current methods. From the result, we understand the network is learning something more general and not the specific behavior of the planner. As a conclusion, we presented state-of-the-art search progress estimation in all three regimes. Our algorithm can be improved in a number of ways. First, by having more data. Second, using more complicated architecture like attention. Using attention give, can give us explainability which features are more important and why the network choose this prediction. Based on the result we got in the experiment, two, we believe that in the network can be used as a baseline and can be fine-tuned in, in the customer side on the relevant domain. Same as NLP is using Bear today. Additionally, we show that learning from data get better results from human expert design that's used in previous algorithms. Thank you all.